PS2 is for bad kids, dude. <laughs> yeah. Bad kids with really bad grades. Is this the part where we start kicking? Kicking? Oh, I want to do some kicking. <laughs> Some people start the episode and they've already like drank half of it. I'm like, guy, like, come on, give it a no, second. No, dude, it's, a, it's part of the ritual, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, without further ado, I think we're uh, good to get going. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This is another episode of the Scoped Exposure podcast. We're traveling down to Savannah to be chatting with Hosian of Vatican and Espionage VR. Thanks for coming on the show, dude. Hey, appreciate it, dude. How's everyone doing, man? Yeah, well, I'm doing good. I can't really speak for everyone who's listening because this is far into the future, but I hope everyone is doing I doing want them great. to reply to my question, though. Oh, <laughs> just in their car by themselves. Yeah, I am doing yeah. good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it matters, dude. Of course. Yeah, so, um, y- you know, we were just chatting before we started recording officially. This has, you know, kind of been an idea of a podcast episode ever since we did uh, an episode with John and Tom of Vatican as well. And Tom was talking multiple times of Hosea needs to be here to talk about some of these things. So I'm glad that we're finally, um, you know, doing this. And it was a no brainer considering some of the badass songs that you guys put out really recently and the recent signing Appreciate with, uh, UNFD. So congrats on that, by the way. Dude, thank you so much. Yeah. It's been, we've been kind of talking with them for over a year now, but finally we were able to like post about it and like Mm. announce the whole thing so it it was kind of relieving to finally be like finally here we go yeah yeah it seems like um you know hardcore is this or hardcore heavy music or diy music however you want to spin it has a very um instant gratification when it comes to you know you can upload things on a band camp and post it that same night yeah without a doubt yeah but sometimes when it's something as big as that that takes you know months if not years in the making uh to make it make the drop that much more impactful for sure oh yeah if there's anything i learned from being in, in this band is that like patience is massively important <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um well before we chat uh about that specifically um top of the show gotta check some bevs so it's tradition that the guest goes first so uh show the people what you got okay so today i am drinking the summer edition of that new red bull flavored dragon fruit yep yep and it, I I don't I don't really know what other people are saying about it, but uh, I actually love it a lot. I tend to I think I love every Red Bull flavor. I don't think there's one flavor that I'm like not again like about. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I was unlike Monster and stuff like that. I always feel like um, there's like one or two where I'm like I wouldn't buy that, but sure. if Red Bull, I'm like give me any color, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, because the follow up question for that was definitely going to be what's your favorite, but it seems like you're your team Red Bull for whatever. Yeah, like uh, the watermelon one is awesome. Mm. Um, the uh, coconut one I love. Um, and then there was like a discontinued summer one from like a year or two ago. It was called like Summer Breeze or something like that. It was like blue. And a lot of people said it tastes like Windex. Oh, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was, like, right. I was like, I guess I like Windex. Then. Right. Yeah, I, I do remember when um I think it was. Yeah, that was last summer because I remember that's right around the time that I started to force the the Bev checks for the episode. And some people would bring <laughs> nice. certain rebels and be like, don't get that summer breeze one. It tastes like shit. But um, yeah, to each Dude, I own, was, right? I'm all about it. I'm all about it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you um do you collect past Red Bull flavors and have like a little going thing, or is no. it just in the mems? It's just in the mems. Yeah. No, I don't. I I don't collect any of the cans. I don't have like my kitchen filled with like Red Bulls, like everyone does with like whiskey and shit. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good idea, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things. It's like, hmm, maybe I should start doing that. Um. I, I mean, think... do you do that kind of stuff since you well, drink so many beverages? Well, like I started to. Like you can kind of see the yeah. some of the the past bevs that I've checked, and you know that's something that I've just thought about. Like you know the, this this podcast background, if you want to call it that, is just my office. So like you got some stuff that is tied to the show, but then there's like just plants and and things like that. And I think plants and are Pokemon, there's Pokemon up there. Pokemon, we got a a DeLorean up there from Back to the Future. Um, is that an orange GameCube controller way way back there? Oh yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's really funny. Oh, wait, which, which side is my face on? There we go. Um, yeah, it's, a, yep. <laughs> it, it's funny that, that you point that out because I had asked for a orange GameCube controller for Christmas this, this past Christmas. And my mother-in-law got that one for me, but it's like a USB plug. And I was like, oh, no, like you were so close. <laughs> yeah 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 so like <laughs> just sitting off to the side is my actual gamecube with an orange controller with a proper input that i ended up buying gotcha. but i was like at the hey, very least cool. i can put it in the <laughs> background so yeah. yeah the whole backdrop matches everything complements each other yeah no I, I think when we get a proper like podcast studio that we can do episodes out of it's gonna be like this in full um you know obviously we're gonna have a bunch of mini fridges with all the bevs just oh. lined up and ready. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Of course. Of yeah. course. And one more thing before we go, like that chai, that what what I've seen that before and I've always been interested in that. Okay. Um what's your review on that? Well, that's what I'm actually checking for this podcast. Oh, dude. Um, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> nice little segue there. Um so yeah. You know, to to give you and the the listeners a, a little bit of a sales pitch, because you know the the whole point is to drink good bevs, but also you know give them a little love and hopefully hey. listeners and people check it out. So this is like the dirty chai, and dirty chai is like my favorite way of drinking a coffee that isn't just straight black coffee. So sure. all it is is like a one to one mix. So as like the summer months are upon us, and like nice weather um this is like an iced version of that is kind of like my go-to so all i do is little little mason jar a little bit of ice a little bit of dirty chai mix from say when and then i'm trying to do this all one-handed and still run the show nice (laughs) and then boom we got a tasty biff ready to go it looks awesome hell yeah dude (laughs) yeah yeah so i i highly recommend um you you or anyone else who's kind of into coffee culture to to give that a shot there's also like if you like straight up chai there's like a spicy one and then there's another one that's like a golden chai so it's uh, a caffeine free so it's a little bit more of like uh like i need to chill out and recover today and just drink some some good tea or chai or whatever dude awesome i will be hitting you up about that again just so i can remember oh absolutely yeah i'll give you the link the the coupon code for the 10 percent off all that good shit. hell yeah hell yeah dude awesome thank you of course and uh you know you might have seen it but like liquid death uh that's the only sparkling water we drink in this house so i always i was drinking one just before we're on the call so i, I really enjoy liquid death my uh, one of my best friends who was my old roommate when i lived in new york he actually works at liquid death so oh cool uh, a little plug to alex lang who's the genius graphic designer sick um, well, yeah, shout our out art to guy there yeah like <laughs> yeah yeah like they, their marketing and all that is super on point. So I, I'm sure yeah. his brain's on, on the creative He's a side. huge metalhead. So it was just like perfect for him to jo- like to just get in there, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've talked about it uh, a number of times, but um, having their VP of marketing sticks on the podcast a, a little while ago was like probably one yeah, of my favorite episodes that I've done for this season so far. Like super sick, dude. super like, yeah, just super crazy, packed full of like ridiculous stories like you know, someone from the company ordering uh, a box of liquid death and then their grandparents think it's like a bomb threat and then that <laughs> becomes this huge thing. Um, but, you know, gotta, uh. gotta show love to a company that's doing a lot, um, you know, on the environmental and <clears throat> sustainability side. So shout out to Most liquid definitely. death and shout out to say when. So yeah, double, double little bev check on the episode. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> so, uh, Hosey and you, you've, um, You've probably peeped uh, a couple different episodes, it sounds like, of the podcast. So any new guests that we have on the show, I usually just like to get a little bit of context about how they got into heavy music, how they got into breakdowns and and those kind of things. So take me way back in time. Tell me like the first kind of moments, uh, records and bands for you that kind of put you on the path to uh, okay. you know, doing what you do. Yeah, so I'm I'm a younger brother. So a lot of like younger siblings kind of take a lot at least in the beginning from their older brother or sister or whatever right um so my brother was really into music a little bit um more than i was and he was kind of like getting into piano and all that stuff and i also grew up in a uh, very like church background that's how i kind of got into like music in the first place so um i kind of just you know piggybacked off of his interests up until like i got old enough to kind of like branch out and he was never into like metal or uh, anything like that. He was like, 
the doors and anything that had like piano stuff because he plays piano sure. he played piano um uh so that and I think that's when it hit me where I was like, I want to like, I don't want to just copy him anymore. I want to do my own thing, you know, trying to be all cool and shit. And then uh, I, I forgot what, I think he was playing Guitar Hero at the time. And I think I heard, was it Stricken, Disturbed? Yep, that's uh, um, that's one of their top songs that, for sure. Yeah, uh, I think he was playing that. It might have been Guitar Hero too. I could be wrong. But, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't like, think it's on three, so it must be two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, I don't know what it is about the way that sounds, but like that sounds cool to me. I like that. Um, yeah. And uh, and I think I just remember downloading that song on LimeWire and putting it on my PSP <laughs> and uh, listening to music, uh, you know, in school before, like on at the bus stop. And mm. uh, just, I literally like was religious. I'm not even like a big Disturbed fan at all, but it was it was at the time when that song was uh, out or whatever. And I was like, man, this is awesome. I like this like more mean sound. I couldn't really explain it. My brother was like, that's distortion. And da, da, da. He was yeah, like explaining yeah. the whole thing. And then I was like, oh, cool. I want to play guitar too. And then I picked up guitar. I don't remember how old I was, dude. I was like, it was some point in middle school. <clears throat> and I was like, this is too smart for me. I hate this. <clears throat> I thought it was supposed to be fun and mindless. Right. And then uh, so I, I, I stopped doing that. And then not too long after that, I was it was one Sunday after church where I decided to just get on the kit after everyone left. Mm. And I was like playing. And then like the uh, music minister guy, he was nearby. He came in, he was like, I didn't know that was you on the kit. Like you might be like, this might be like a natural thing. Like we want to put you on the thing, you know, for Sunday or whatever. And I was right. like, Oh wow. Okay. And then I started thinking about, it. I was like, I like this because you don't have to really think that much. It's mm. just hitting stuff. Right. Um, yeah. And I've all explained this to my friends with like, the whole theory behind music i'm like if i can just hear a sound like i know that that's the snare drum because a snare drum sounds like that I, a chord or whatever i'm like this is beyond me i'd rather just hit stuff so yeah um yeah. i think i got more into that <clears throat> and then i started to from there i i started to explore like a lot of different music and my first like ultimate favorite band was the police um and uh you know, also I like them a lot because Stuart Copeland actually was a composer for Spyro the Dragon on the PlayStation One, the first oh, one. Oh, okay. I didn't know so that. That's I, a fun fact. Cool. Yeah, there was all this like lore. I was just like re <laughs> looking shit up, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like my one of my favorite drummers is actually did music for the first PlayStation game I ever owned, and mm. I get really attached to stuff when I hear like little side things that like uh, always make their way back to like the source. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Like anything, like any, any kind of like added lore stuff. I'm always like, yeah, this is awesome. I love this more than anything now. So I got into like, you know, uh, video games and music was just always a thing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I started listening to other stuff like corn and slipknot whenever uh, my parents weren't around. Cause I was like, Dude, this is cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Oh um, yeah. Like, no, it's a, uh, it's disciple or TFK or newsboys or whatever it is. Like, don't worry. Dude, uh, gosh, I newsboys that's hilarious. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, um, and mercy me. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, I listen, listen to all that stuff, skillet and all that shit. But um, oh, dude, I, I, yeah, I remember, uh, like in, I think I was in ninth grade, and, and my parents are still kind of strict about uh, like what what I was bringing home, listening to. Uh, yeah. I, I don't remember the. It might have been a what Slayer album was it? Um, South of Heaven, maybe. Or what was what was the name of that? I think that was the name of the album, right? Sure. South of Heaven. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I my mom found my South of Heaven uh, uh, CD inside one of my like rated E games. I used I hid it in there. I hid it in there, and she found the game that that case was for. Right outside of it, so she's like, "I'm gonna put it in here," and I was stupid, and I was like, "Oh," and I came back from school, and she was like. I found this in your, uh, was it like Ape Escape or something like that? I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, and Lego Star like, Wars, the original yeah, yeah, game yeah. or so, whatever it is. Something where I'm like, my parents would all would be like, yeah, he's playing that, that's good. But like, there's sure. a Slayer CD in there. <laughs> um, Love that. And I was, yeah, eventually, I think that moment was when we had a big combo where I was like, I'm sorry, I just love like, this shit is sick, man. Like metal and all that. Uh, and, and then my parents were like, I don't, and we're, 
super like, you know, Puerto Rican parents who are like Christian or whatever. And they're like, we don't know what this is, man. Whatever, man. You do whatever you want. Just don't be stupid. <laughs> right. Right. No. So, that, yeah. That, that's so yeah, funny that you big. bring up the, uh, you know, hiding different video games. I remember um, before I was 18, I was like, I got a friend from school to buy me. I think it was the very first Left for Dead. And that was like rated M. So like I yeah. wanted to put like zombie anything. I was always like obsessed with growing up. You know, I was like a huge fan of The Walking Dead when it was like first on TV and just just everything like playing Halo 2, like custom game zombies like that. That was my shit. Um, That's awesome. It, it, like I won't link it, but if someone is nerdy enough and wants to deep dive, there's a there's a zombie montage that I made like back in like 2000 nine or ten or whatever when i was like just so into the the halo lore but i remember i bought yeah i got him to buy me left for dead and i like i hit it in i think my desk at the time had these like cd slots and i would like kind of slide it in and for some reason i'm just at home on my computer doing my homework or something and my mom walked in and like i don't know it was like something was telling her that it was like there's something here and she just like reached and grabbed it and pulled it out and she was just like what the fuck are you doing? But obviously, you know, not dropping the f bomb in our Christian house as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't hide anything from from parents. Yeah, dude. yeah, they just know they have they have like a sense. They're like, I for some reason I want to look at that thing in that direction in that part of the shelf for for <laughs> randomly, and I'm like, dude, I I don't know if you remember, um, like the fat PS2 had like a like a network like adapter port thing in the back where it was like a pretty deep um you know you could put your hand in there oh i used to hide i used to hide um all of my rated m psp games in there (laughs) so i had like grand theft auto liberty city stories Def jam um and i also used to hide all my bad progress reports with bad grades on them in there too (laughs) you just like picks it up in his video games and all the (laughs) the progress reports. yeah that was absolutely I, 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 I can, that was the one thing they never, they don't even know that that exists still. Right. Hmm. I finally got one over them. Yeah. I was like, they'll never look in this network <laughs> adapter tray. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everyone at PlayStation that was like, maybe we should make this secret port so maybe people can hide like their games and, and anything oh, yeah, they don't PS- want their parents to find in our console. Yeah, PS2, PS2 is for bad kids, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. bad kids with really bad grades wow that's yeah <laughs> that, if that's a headline i don't know what is um yeah so, so there there's a number of things there um you know it, it's you know i i definitely know the the vibe of coming up in a christian household and going to church and um yeah it was kind of funny too like on the drum side the the church that i was originally going to with my family they had a lot like i'm sure you know like the the glass or the you know it's so normal shield, now in man. our world with the yeah. plexiglass but like at the time it's yeah. like yeah you have the live drums and then essentially a um plex- plexiglass to kind of dampen the sound but yeah. i think at the time it was kind of interesting because at, at least it was live drums um versus like the electronic kit but you know over the years i think that they you know changed to like those hybrids where it's like the real symbols but they're electric if you know what i'm talking about Yep, yep. Uh, my what my church recently was gotten one of those before. Like I stopped going there or whatever. So yeah, I know what you're talking about. They're like it's like a it lo- it might feel kind of like a symbol, but you can control the volume and all that stuff yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah at, at least when they were originally doing it, like oh, this is a full thing. Like I I was always like I don't know. It was funny because everyone's like doing their worship thing and i'm just like watching the drummer so like that, just mind geez. blown on on some of those things and it was that, that was all yeah i loved it yeah it wasn't even something where he was like super technical but i just always loved watching the drummer in in those cases but even when i was like going to my first couple shows i always a good drummer always caught my attention um if that makes sense and, um, and, and, and in the, and in that environment it's not necessarily about the like the technical stuff it was always like man they're literally like perfect like like their the feel was perfect you know mm-hmm. yeah um and they had to be because if you had a good uh worship minister like you do anything that was like a little bit freestyle or custom like they'll look at you like 
I never said you could do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it, there's a lot of like discipline in like coming up in church music and learning like when to like service the song or when to like, you know, kind of go off. And I've played in multiple like different types of churches, like, um, you know, your standard, like, uh, you know, slow song ministry, like type thing. And then the, towards the end of my church, like playing, I was playing in a full like gospel church where it was like, all right, now BPM up to like 180. <laughs> like just right. going off and there's and it, it's music the entire time even when the, the pastor's preaching and and then you have to like also know how to improvise and do like oh she says something really dope and powerful you have to hit it you know like right. all it was it was really it that was like such a huge challenge for me too yeah no yeah in that world they're in that world they're like you gotta shred man mm. and i'm like okay and in the other world they were like you can't do anything. You must yeah. just sit, sit tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, and, and I think, you know, um, that was always kind of weird for me where it's like such a, a weird, like dichot dichotomy. I don't know if that's the right word, but it was like, Oh, we want, we want the spirit to lead, but then it's like, Oh, but we can only play the bridge once we can't do a repeat or whatever. So yeah, dude. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I felt like over time as I kind of, uh, declined in how much I even wanted to go, um, it just it was kind of like well like i'm i'm getting my fix with music in way way better means anyways um yeah totally i'm with you on that yeah. exactly so um let's <clears throat> kind of transition a little bit um so you know when i did the podcast with john and tom we talked about some of the history of uh vatican so instead of um essentially reiterating some of those things um let's talk specifically on the new songs that you guys have just put out <laughs> Um, you know, okay. recently signing to uh, UNFD, <clears throat> which I actually don't know what that stands for. Um, it's unified, yeah. Oh, unified. Okay, but they it's go, but they, but they go by UNFD as well. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys uh, announced that. Um, you dropped the two songs. You did the music video. Um, I watched the music video just before getting on the call um, because I had watched like different things like through the teasers on Instagram, um, but watching the full thing for the first time, I was like this this has like serious terminator 2 vibes so um talk to oh, me oh dude i <laughs> yeah so talk to me about like shooting that video because like i loved all the behind the scenes like the giant like kind of like abandoned warehouse kind of you know setting that you've uh did it in but even all like i'm sure there's some easter eggs in the video that i want to kind of pick your brain about but tell me about the overall like process of shooting that yeah well that was um uh, that came together pretty quickly um uh shout out to eric richter who directed the whole thing and, and his whole crew mm -hmm. um he was amazing and uh someone i consider a good friend now um we how we talked to the now what the songs come out in like april 22nd or the third i think of of uh last month the video <clears throat> got filmed a week before the song, everything dropped that's so crazy <laughs> yeah God. like like we were like oh this shit drops next week we're filming it right now right um and and vatican has like a very like uh special gift that i don't think we you know we don't tap into this every time but we do have the ability to like hit something clutch all the time like oh we need a song we can you know, it needs something needs to happen in like a week we got it now like like and i i always think that it's good to tap into that um sometimes if you only rely on that then definitely not a good thing right. but um in this sense with the video we had been planning it for months but it didn't actually come into fruition until like a few weeks before shooting it with the story and everything mm. um and yeah i'm glad you mentioned the terminator 2 vibes because that was kind of what eric brought to the table he was like like oh i like how you know uh, the idea of the video is to imagine how the future would look if you were thinking about how the future would look in the nineties, you know, like every, oh, okay. how, I, yeah. how people imagine the future in the nineties was sicker than how they imagine it today. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like when Terminator came out, you're like, that is so sick. Right. That's how they, that's how people back then visualized how it would be like today or whatever. Mm. And I think that that was kind of the idea, like, you know, thinking about like aesthetically anyways, like how, like 
that that vibe you know right. um but uh it was it was a mixture of terminator 2 um and my big thing was uh like detroit become human the game of uh, playstation okay. 4 game cool i was like i want to do some sort of like like bio mechanical or like android or augmented human like deus ex as well is yes. another one that i pulled inspiration from um and yeah it, some ghost in the shell vibes as well especially with uh how maddie's like human character looked uh, before she was all like robotty mm. um but yeah it was it was it was a cool i think we shot that video I think it took like 10 hours and the song was only like two minutes and 20 seconds. But um, we, we definitely, we came in really clutch with it. And uh, it's, I think it's the coolest video we've ever done. Yeah. Um, and it kind of sets the bar for like how, you know, surpassing it. And, and, and it's challenging because it was a hard video and it was like so cool to look at and everything. I'm kind of like, okay, now we got ourselves in this position. We have to like top it. Yeah. Right. But yeah, we have to go ham. Yeah, but yeah, it is funny because like you you hear about you know we we alluded it uh, at the beginning of the podcast like talking with uh, Unified for for om- like over a year as far as like you know figuring that out. But some sometimes it is in those things where like a, a big rapper will literally like finish their album that they've been working on for two years and then they can just like upload it to Spotify for the next week. But sometimes it is like I'm gonna sit on this for so long. So it's very cool. Yeah. Like the video is insanely well done. Like, you know, it's not, it, it Thanks, doesn't dude. feel like it was thrown together in like a week's time. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure the, the grueling hours in the edit was probably real, but, but at the same time, like you were saying, um, any good music video involves an insane amount of pre-production, which is usually the large chunk of work before you're actually like putting the drums down and, and click and go and, and doing exactly a, doing a take. And, 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 um, like I said, you know, kind of tapping into that, like clutch mentality kind of like gears you like fires you up to be like, okay, no mistakes, mm. like no fucking around, no fuck ups. Like we have to do this right. Right. And it can't, and it, and it's, you know, with how little time we had to put it together, I feel like we also did the most that we could do, mm. um, with it as well so like the the way things look the costume stuff um the robot character maddie uh all of that like i was like man i can't believe we actually did this like this is crazy this is the craziest thing we've ever done dude yeah yeah i i i i love the um the aspect of that video how it kind of tells this mini story and leaves you kind of like okay well what's next so you yeah. know my, my hope is that um there's potentially uh you know kind of a part two that comes with uh with that's that's the idea yeah there 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 is things that will go into the next thing for Mm -hmm. sure yeah um i know like it's not in the official music video um but you guys like put out the little um i guess like little teaser video on your own personal instagrams where you go to the game shot you get like the vatican oh yeah yeah. psv game um that another another thing that i thought of like a minute before it had to be a thing. <laughs> oh, really? Like it was a couple, yeah. like a day or so, and you're like, we should. I, I, I was, I was like, you know what, dude? Like, I'm gonna make a, a PS2 game of the of the artwork, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, Nolan, who is a uh, also in the band, he we kind of like toyed around with some ideas or whatever, right? Um, and yeah, that that was the idea where I was like, I don't know, I want to do something with this, mm-hmm. and then me tom and nolan got together and we were starting to brainstorm like how do we announce like that we're signed to a brand new label in a in a different way that is it just like here's like a static graphic image that's just like thanks welcome blah 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 right right i was like no we i was like we could do we can do you know better than that or what's the one percent further than just the basic idea like that's all that's all it takes sometimes yeah and eventually it turned into like this whole thing where we're like, Oh, let's go to my old job. Cause that's where I used to work before um, doing espionage full time. And I was like, I asked my old boss, I was like, can we do this here? He's like, yeah, I don't care. Um, <laughs> These are still close friends of mine and everything. Right. Um, and I was like, we should find this game on the shelf. And then they kind of shot it and took it from there. 
Um, but yeah, we, we kind of all worked on it together and, and it came, it, that was also a thing where we were just finishing that video the day before we were supposed to announce it. It was just like, Oh shit. Crazy. Sometimes we always, sometimes we literally think of like the most like grandiose thing a minute before it needs to happen. And we're just like, well, fuck, we thought of it. Now we have to actually do it. (laughs) Like we, I, when I tell you we we go clutch, it's it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, like like a, it's it's like I want to reiterate it uh, for all the people in the back of the podcast room, so to speak. But I think a lot of bands do default into like the very basic, like here's the announcement graphic post at the same time. Yeah, we're done. So I, but I do think it requires bands to think. How do we throw our spin on this and take it to that like next step for people like for for it to become a bigger thing than just like, oh, this is cool. It's like, oh, like there's there's sauce to this versus just, you know, the same old song and dance. Totally. And I think I think what really helped um, at least me come up with like visual or like aesthetic ideas for this band was um, just putting ourselves into it. Like, what do we like? And. Like once, once we started to just be like, fuck it, man, like, let's just do what we think is cool, even outside of music, into the music, and the ideas just kind of flow easier now, because it's not like, you're not making up some sort of aesthetic or theme that's not really how you are in real life, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and kind of the idea with, uh, with this band is like, you know, we're not very serious people, most, like most of the time, we, we joke around, we, you know, we goof around and all that stuff, and but then we're also people that have like real feelings and emotions and sometimes shit does suck or whatever. And, and I don't, and I think a lot of fans always separate those two. Like, Oh, mm-hmm. if you're sad, you have to be sad all the time. If you're like a happy man, like that's the thing. And I'm like, well, I'm a big metal gear solid fan and Yakuza fan. And those games are totally dramatic while also being very hilarious at the same time. Sure. Yeah. Like the, like they, like that's just, that's kind of the vibe. So Mm. I was like, why can't a music or a band kind of be on that same wave, you know? Yeah. Um, So that was the idea. I was like, let's just have fun. But like, we're also being real on on all aspects with it. Like, you know, when shit sucks, it sucks. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. Why you, I think it's cool to, you know, to express that journey. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think the, you know, on the video side, like it was interesting to have like this very, like, very like bare bones DIY style video of going into the game shop, finding the game, putting it in, and then like it goes into the TV and then you have like the animation and then like the professionally done music video. So I think that was a great play to like, you kind of uh, not just be like, hey, we're on this big label now and now we got all this music video money. It was like, a, a nice way of like showing how like down to earth and real you guys are and how like, you know, don't get it twisted. We were like always love games and then like kind of transitioning that really, really nicely. Yeah. And it, it was really cool. Cause like everybody had a hand in that like whole like aspect of the video. Like I made the PS2 case. I um, mean, we used my old job and Nolan, he actually created the whole like little startup screen where we're like pixelated or whatever. Right. Tom did a lot of the shooting. He did uh, the editing of the whole uh, video as well. Mm. Um, and we were just like, let's just like put our heads together and do something. And we all, if all of us are like, this is cool. Like that means like it's a good idea, you know? Right. So, and, and that was a question that I kind of had because I think one of the last things that Tom said on, on his podcast, was just like, yo, like being a nerd is fucking cool. Like don't let anyone, you know, tell you uh, or you know, talk down to you for like liking video games or, you know, whatever, you know, you know, console or series that, that you, you front with or you fuck with. Um, what was like kind of the defining moment for you guys? Cause I, I've like, you know, we, we, we've talked about some of like the hilarious moments of like LDB fest and everyone's holding up the switches and then like (laughs) all these, another, uh, another, another literal 30 second till we had to play idea (laughs) right right yeah um but but like what was kind of the moment for you like like you were saying where it was like okay like let's focus this more on like our passions and who we are as people versus like we're trying to be like a like a like a spooky scary like metalcore band of the future like yeah, what yeah. like what was the defining moment of like yo like let's just go full nerd mode and like really pump the the gaming fuel into uh the music 
I think it was just, I, I don't know if it was like a thought, like where I was like, you know, this is like, let's do it now. Or like something like that. I think it was just kind of an organic thing where we stopped. I think what kind of helped was maybe caring less about what people think. Sure. Um, and, and then the, the, our interest bleeding into the band happened naturally because of that way of thinking changing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, on the soul impulse, the last album that we did our last video that we made for, um, X Nilo. Um, it was just a compilation of like gaming, uh, like shots or whatever, uh, right. our friend, yeah. uh, Bert put together, you know? And I think that was like, when we saw how that video did compared to like the others in, in, in that cycle, we were like, man, this is cool. Like we just did it. Cause like, first of all, we didn't really have anything else to do. Like another, like, crazy idea or whatever and Mm -hmm. we were just like fuck it let's just do like a montage like old like 2008 style like youtube montage of people like blowing shit up right straight (laughs) up and and, and i was like you know that's what we did and 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 a lot of people were like wow this is so sick blah 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 and it made me realize i was like there's so many people who are like who think and are like us in this scene i think that they didn't really have like a place to talk about it or maybe they didn't know if they should for various reasons or whatever right. but i'm like who gives a fuck dude like like this is just like who we if that's a part of your makeup and that's something you really like like talk about it with us and we love that shit so yeah. um i think when we started to see all those people being like oh my god yeah gamers like like i fuck i do this too i'm crazy about it too and, I, right. and seeing people enthusiastic about like a band like uh doing what they're into as well and being very like, who gives a fuck, dude? Like, we're just doing it. Um, uh, it made people excited. And I think that was also always like, a, hey, man, this was an honest shot. And and it seemed, and it connected with other people. And that's what's more, more most important is like being able to like connect with an audience of people who actually feel the same way as you or you feel the same way as them. And and at that point, I was like, fuck it. Like, we're just going to do it. We're, we're just that band now. We're just like, if, if we put something out, there's a 99.999% chance there's some sort of video game influence attached to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I think, I, I think that's a very interesting, um, you know, approach to it because, you know, e- like there, there's been such a shift even just like on the heavy music culture where when I was first getting into it, like you, it was weird to like, like New York hardcore and then like, like rise records breakdown music like like how dare you even like consider those two yeah but nowadays it feels like a lot more people are open to having bridges to being like i'll listen to something that's like you know super ridiculous like ignorant mosh music but i also listen to like chiodos or like chon or like really technical tapping music i mean that that's the world that i really like was obsessed with um coming into like hardcore and stuff like that like my favorite bands coheed and cambria right like uh, uh and, and then mashuga that those two are my favorite bands and they're and those are wildly different from each other as well but mm. it's just like who gives it like it's just cool it's fun and it's good music so whatever yeah yeah like i i think and and i tell this to people all the time like nothing you know people's music interests obviously have some you know input into the culture but it's not like this make or break kind of thing it doesn't need to be like oh if you are into hardcore you need to know all these things like it's important to do your research for sure but it does like it's kind of what you want to like see what you gravitate towards and let that you know be your essentially flag that you carry around because i i just like having diversity within that to have festivals that will have like beat down bands and then have scram bands or have punk punk hardcore bands or like yeah. death metal bands i think that all plays into the overall like i think it's a net positive for everyone i i agree and it, it, it like at, at the end of the day if if you like it and it makes you happy and it makes you feel good like whether whatever it is like you know mad ball then chan or whatever, <laughs> like but who cares and if and if there's anyone you know clowning on you or judging you or making fun of you or shitting on you about it like is that you want to be around anyways like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's just, uh, you know, that's just showing their insecurities of maybe they maybe they feel pressure of like, oh, I 
I, I maybe want to give certain bands a shot, but like in my own circles, I would look, be looked down on. So I have to, you know, push that outwards onto other people. So I, and, th- and then you also have like the, the guys who are straight purists and I, and that's cool too. You know, they're, they're like, I only like black metal from this place or whatever. I'm like, sure. that's, that's definitely dope. Like, that's cool. I, uh, I don't know. I'll check it out, but I'll also listen to the wiggles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the wiggles um <laughs> like obviously you know my music cha- tastes have changed drastically uh where there's some bands where maybe i won't necessarily go out of my way to do that or i'll be like super into one like I, I i think in the last you know five years i've definitely changed my favorite subgenre like multiple times so I, I think that's healthy because you're, you know, listening to lots of music. But um, yeah, yeah I, I think, you know, whether you're into music and and the stuff outside of that, I think you should rep that because I think, you know, diversity within the people that are coming there is important, but also like the interest to, to kind of showcase like, hey, we're all coming from these kind of weird little pockets. Yeah. And I see people comment on uh, like our, our stuff on YouTube with the new stuff. They're like, oh like they're all just gent blah 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 this and that and i'm like and i'm like i love that shit man <laughs> <laughs> i'm like yeah you're right <laughs> yeah no it, it yeah it's funny because some some people will just like immediately go to one band and it's like i i can maybe see that but like i'm always curious when someone says hey i think Spencer, I think your band sounds like this. And I'm like, that's actually not what I was going for. But I'm like willing to have that conversation of how you got to that conclusion. And and so oh, yeah, people, people, people always Yeah, that happens all the time, like, like, for people to feel like familiar with something, they have to connect it that's to something they have already heard before. Right? Yeah, it's not like, you know, they go to the hardcore encyclopedia website and plug in that you know, I think this band sounds like this. And they'd be like, mm, you're actually wrong or whatever, you know, yeah, there, there's, yeah. there's some kind of reference point that people are making. So if someone's like, Oh, this just sounds like gent, maybe they only know about gent and they don't listen to all the other stuff that you guys clearly, cl- clearly draw from. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and we draw from so many different things. Like there's a well of like infinite shit, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It like, it goes, it goes deep. Um, you know, going back to the music video, um, you know, like I really like the vibe. I had a couple questions if there are specific like Easter eggs, because again, like growing up and playing Halo 2 and like going online being like, so if I go around this corner, I can find, you know, like a uh, skull or whatever a skull yeah. or like uh, I think it's in I think it's the second mission of Halo 3 where you're just starting to like it's right as the covenant kind of like land and you grab like all your weapons and then you start to go through the halls. If you go a little further than where you're supposed to go, there's like a voiceover between uh, two of the guys from like red versus blue and being a huge red yes. versus plant red versus blue fan. I like that's one of my favorite Easter eggs of all time. That's those things that like one thing connects to the other. And you're just like freaking out that right. my um, one of my best friends, Bert, when he moved down here, all we did, he was like, we're playing Halo. Cause I, I don't know if they told him in the last podcast, but I was new to the series. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I remember him being like, like check this part out or whatever. Like he, like he was basically like my live tour guide as I'm playing <laughs> the game. He's like, he's like, you need to know about this. You know about this. And, right. I, and I, because I, of that, because of him doing that, like the series quickly, like jumped to like a top 10 immediately, just cause I was like, this is like the attention to detail that I love that like makes me like the games that I like. So mm-hmm. I was like, this is just one of those games that are really special. And I wish I was a part of it when it was all coming out, but I'm also happy that I even just got a chance to do it now. So, yeah, I, I definitely think that they're, you know, like uh, we'll, we'll get to my original question, but I, we're going to take a little bit of uh, different tangents because like, <laughs> sure. you know, growing up, like I, I started playing Halo one, like very like when it like first came out because i i remember you know going back to like the whole like church upbringing i remember there was like a youth group event and they were playing halo one like all like multiple tvs all the xboxes connected and i want to know what church that was (laughs) that's sick (laughs) yeah i don't think that maybe they should have uh been playing an m-rated game for like especially they were like they were like they were like halo this must be christian let's play this game (laughs) 
Um, but I remember, I remember that so vividly because I was like, we were just like doing like stupid shit on like Blood Gulch, and I was like, this is so cool. And then that like started like I got my own Xbox, and then I would play Xbox Live when Halo Two came out, and it was this giant thing. Um, I actually started doing like machinima on my own as like a 14, 15 year old kid, just like That's so literally sweet, meeting kids in Xbox live and being like, Hey, I'm making this zombie movie. Do you want to be in it? And just being like, like, I, like I could probably still list probably 10 different gamer tags of the people that I would really regularly hit up for videos. And so, I mean, think about, think about that, like, how you were back then, like that stuff translates to how you are now, even if it's like something Absolutely. you don't even notice, like, <laughs> you know, it, it's so sick, dude. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. Um, but anyway, so yeah, like red versus blue was like a huge reason why I got into just making videos as well. So like it's, it's without a doubt, without those games, I probably like wouldn't be doing anything probably with scoped or as deep as I am. Um, but exactly. yeah, that, uh, that game series is huge for me. So, so to go back to the original question, um, is there any Easter eggs in the, uh, in the music video that you guys did either in the edit or it was like, Oh, we're absolutely gonna, you know, do like a quick shot of this and you would only see it if you were going at like 0.25 speed or whatever. Right. So that example, we're going to put for the next video, like, Oh, like, was that a ps2 in the background or something like something like sure. that like um for this one uh because of the time and, and and resources at the time um so there's that hud display like whenever um the robots turned on and you mm. see all the, like the little graphics and stuff i also made those like three days before the video even dropped that was like because he was like this terminator idea remember i was telling you about it and i was like fuck I got to go on Photoshop right now and make all this shit. Right, um, right, right. And because, because I was kind of doing it all, I was like, I'm going to sneak in like a lot of shit. Um, and like, there's a display on the top right that turns on and it's like telling her like what kind of like modes she's on right now. And, and there's a little arrow that's pointing at her idle state, but then there's other little things on the bottom that you can like a, like a selection. And I just named like, songs off of actual full length that we're going to be recording um, oh, in a month interesting. Um, so but i didn't name them the actual song that's going to be called i named them all of the google drive uh id like like demo song ideas sure okay. like like one like one of the songs um that we have a demo name for is called ultra gold because that was written by mackie and tom when they drank the monster ultra gold <laughs> And they just but and then they just shit out of like an amazing song. Damn. And I was like, this might actually just be the name of the song on the LP, but right. I'm gonna put that as an option. I'm gonna put like this and that. And then there's another song we called uh, uh that's titled C4 because me and Tom drank C4 before we wrote the song. And that's on all there these too. different bevs uh <laughs> as, <laughs> yeah. far as modes. Love yeah, there's that. there's that there's that on the side. There um uh, on the bottom left at the very end of the video, there's like a life bar draining, but it doesn't go all the way to zero mm. because uh, it's supposed to tie into like the robot coming back. Like she's, she's actually not dead, mm. but that life bar, I can, I'm, it's uh, inspired from um, first Metal Gear Solid game, the way, it, the way it looks and the way it's, so that's a little, another little Easter egg. Um, What's with the 333% successful? <laughs> okay. That is actually my lucky number. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. And I was like, I see this number every day for the last 14 years. Uh, and I, it follows me everywhere. And I got really like psychotic with it and started like learning about all that kind of shit. Um, mm. I was like, it'd be cool to just uh, put it in there. I was like, I was like, if a succession rates a hundred, that's, a, that's, that's cool. But like, that's to what be if expected. the succession... So, yeah, yeah, I was like, what if this, what if the succession rate was three hundred and thirty three percent? Because who fucking cares? <laughs> and and it's just cool. And it's also like, you know, putting it there for me was like, you know, and I don't I don't know if I even explained it to to the rest of the band, but it was like a 
I had really good faith about the video. And I was like, this shit's going to be fucking dope. And people are going to be like, wow. And I was like, so we'll put my lucky numbers in there to be like, it makes me feel good that that's there. Love that. That's so, so sick. yeah. So, so that, I, that's that. Um, and for people that are like into like numerology and shit, like they'll know like, uh, the three, three, three stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that, uh, um, if there's any other Easter eggs, because like I said, I made all that stuff so fast. Yeah. Um, I, I think I a lot like, of oh. those, um, de- like, I, I think a lot of questions around that came up in the heads up display. Um, cause I, I paused the video and I was looking around I'm like, okay, what, what's uh, that was the point. I wanted, I wanted people to pause. I wanted people to rewind. I wanted, cause that's like, that's what we all did when we were like 14. Absolutely. We're just like, did I just see that? Like, Oh, like, and like, you know, you just want to tap into this shit that you, you feel good about, you know? Right. Yeah. No, it, it's funny that you bring that, that three, three, three is your lucky number. Cause, um, that's a pretty, infamous number in the western canada um scene because there used to be a a diy spot in vancouver that was uh like the the title that everyone called it was 333 and it was yeah i played i played there before oh you have played there oh okay yeah no and 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 when and when i saw that it was another like reassuring i see i feel good about like how things are going yeah like that's that's a huge one for me because i'd never heard of a venue or a place with that name type of like incorporated in it. So that I'm glad you mentioned that because that was, I remember that. And then the guys in the band were like, yo, you see the venue name, man? Like, and I was like, yes, I did. I did. (laughs) Cause they all, they all know how I am. Oh, that makes me so happy that that you've been there and you've had that little, uh, yeah. I played there and the stage was like falling apart and shit. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, unfortunately that, uh, that venue kind of, um, it kind of went under like kind of right before the pandemic started. So yeah, it, it's one of those things. I think in the first few months after that, all my Vancouver friends were like, anytime they would see that number in an apartment building or, you know, literally it reference it somehow. Yeah. They would just like, it would just be like, Oh, now I'm crying or whatever it is. So <laughs> yeah. 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 So, it's a say it, 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 it's when you see that number, like it's, it's, it's something you should be reassured about and feel good. But like, you know what? Things are good. Yeah. Like it's something that it's like a reminder, you know, I see to um, me anyways. Do you like, if I told you what my lucky number is, would you be able to tell me if like what that means? I, I pro maybe I only know a few, but, but okay. what is it? Oh, it's 99. Okay. I don't know, but have you researched it? No. Yeah. I like I, for me, 99 was always this like, Oh, it's like the highest two decibel number. So it's like the best one um that's, so, that's cool <laughs> <laughs> but it's there was i think growing up it's like you know like being canadian you would like watch hockey and be like wing gretzky is the best and he repped 99 for a lot of the years yeah, that he was playing um so i i think when i bought um you know i was not a sports gamer by any means but i always and i have a copy of it down there uh i always played nhl hits 2003 and when I like made my character, it was like 99. Anytime I need like, like, I don't know. If, no, I'm, I'm trying to think. No, I, I don't have any passwords with this. But anytime like back then I was doing like a password for like an email address, it would always have like a 99 if it needed to have a number. So, you know, that for me was always like my special number. But now, now I'm curious. I want to go into and, and see, you know, what that means on, on that side. Yeah. And then who knows? Like, you know, it. It, whatever if you believe in like spiritual or weird stuff like that like even if it's not a thing you know it's i think it's okay you can attach some sort of feeling to it uh mm-hmm. just like you do when you listen to a song or or you play a game like there's something attached to uh you attached it emotionally even if it was like a subconscious thing um you can do that with the uh, you know patterns that you see every day as well yeah yeah definitely um yeah i i, I think I don't know. I I think that sometimes there are those funny things of like, oh, I'm just picking this because I used to do that in this video game. But there might be, uh, you know, deeper meetings to that. So, yeah, I have to check it out and uh, and let you know. Um, So so you were mentioning um, so in the in the I guess the announcement video, you did it at your old job. But I guess you're doing espionage VR as your full time thing now, which is really badass, honestly. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to chat about that. Um, 
it, it's kind of this like conglomerate of like a bunch of different things. So like help me break down some of those things because I went to the main page and then there's like uh, there's Vatican VR, which makes sense. It's the band that you're a part of. There's restricted VR, new type VR and giant size VR. So break down what obviously we know what Vatican is, but like tell me about how there's all these different entities that you're trying to send people to. Um, yeah, uh, when I started Espionage VR in 2017, uh, it was, you know, just because I was on a tour and I, um, ended up losing my job that was like making the, all like the money that to pay rent and bills and stuff. Uh, I lost it like a week into that tour and I was like, oh, all right, I got like, what's going to like, what do I do coming back home? Like, I don't it was one of those like survival things kicked in where I was like, I got to think of something like I, I, I'm screwed, you know? Mm. Uh, and I, and I, I, I was like, the first thing I remember doing was uh, I was thinking, I was like, what do I like and what do I want to see that I don't see? Mm. Uh, and then that was the first thing it was like, uh, Oh, put metal gear solid on the shirt. <laughs> it was that simple. And I remember Tom was driving and I was like, would you wear this? He was like, yeah. I was like, all right, well then I'm good. like, this is what's going to be. Um, and fast forward, you know, up until now, you know, uh, you know, I espionage is what it is now. And uh, Nolan started another one. I was like, let's make like a VR umbrella. Like that's like dot VR is kind of like the thing that we gave ourselves that I think people kind of can familiar familiarize with us. Um, so I was like, make one because he's really into like movies and horror and all that stuff and uh, you know sci fi esque type movies. And I was like, dude do the same thing as espionage, but with your tastes. And uh, the new type one is also me uh, tapping into like the stuff I like with like Gundam and all that. And then uh, Tom recently did giant size, which is the same thing, but for what he likes. And I was like, dude, let's just do shit that we like. And right. eventually I was like, the band can just be a part of the same umbrella too. Cause it's like, it's us as well. And you know, it, it was just kind of, all, it wasn't really planned like super deep or anything. It was just like, oh, let, let's just uh, include that. And then we kind of have like VR unit, which is a thing that involves everything uh, and then all the people who want to be a part of it. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a really uh, cool way of kind of packaging that because it almost feels like this, um, you know, if, if if all you guys did like a little like market or whatever it was like you would all have your individual booths but they're all under like the same thing um at the exactly end of the day. so yeah yeah I, I i definitely think so you started that as just like uh out of necessity um you know so you can make some money for you know to continue the band stuff when like how did it just grow to the sake where it's like oh like my nine to five so to speak is doing this um i think i just kind of was mostly consistent putting stuff out and um, making stuff and, and, and espionage even taught me how to use Photoshop in the first place. Like I, it was, it's a tool that like has helped me so much uh, with applying it to like other things in life um, sure. and things in the band. Eventually it just kind of snowballed, like thinking about it now, I'm like, damn, that happened. Like, it feels like it was yesterday. Cause I didn't really think about it. Like it was just kind of happening. Um, and uh, last summer in July, that's when I was like, okay, like I can't, like I'm getting like a lot more orders, uh, things are picking up uh, and the job I'm working at, which is the game store, um, is kind of like taking over that. And all this time I'm here working, I, I want to be doing my the espionage stuff, packing orders so I don't have to be packing at nine o'clock at night and right. all the way until two or three in the morning and then just go back to work again feeling dead. Um, eventually I was like, I got I think I covered all my ground with like, uh, like, you know, what can I do to keep doing this, but still have my job. Sure. And eventually I was like, the last scary thing to do is quit your job. Um, and that's always the scariest thing, but the scariest thing is sometimes the thing that pushes you to the next level, you know? Right. And so I was like, time to do the scary thing. And I called <laughs> my dad and my mom. Cause I was like growing up, they've always been like, you can't that no, you got to work. And you know, like, you can't quit your job. You need another job to line it up. And I'll, that's how my whole life was like sure. growing up in um, Hispanic. My dad was in the army and all like, it's just like very like stern type shit. Yeah. Um, 
And then when I called him and he was like, dude, you got to quit. What are you talking to me for? I was like, are you serious? <laughs> wow. He's like, go quit. He's like, you're quitting tomorrow. I was like, fuck. All right. Well, damn it. You, you know, getting that like approval from someone who's always been like, you better like never do some shit like that. Mm. Uh, uh, it felt good. And that's how I knew it was right. It was scary, but it was the right thing to do. Right. Um, so I did. And, and like I said, starting espionage, it was, a. Uh, it was um, one of those things where a scary thing happened to help me think about this thing to do. And right. I, and you know, those are like messages. I think you know, uh, you know, not not uh, letting like being afraid to do something to prevent you from doing the thing. Right. Um, and I'm like at this point, like I've learned, like if you cover all your ground and there's that one big thing that you've been kind of avoiding because you don't want to do it, you're like, I'm going to like do all the little things. So like the big scary objective, I don't have to worry about it. But when you got everything done and it's just a big scary thing left, like, what do you do? You turn around or do you just say like, you know what? I have to like actually believe in myself now. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And, and then it kind of just became like this whole thing. And I'm more, I'm super grateful. And it's not just like a, you know, a, a basic store where I post a design and people buy, like, I wanted to like, my goal was to create a community around this, like, you know, talking to people that feel the same way as me about video games. And I care more about that than to be like a faceless brand or something. Absolutely. And I think, I think people connected with that and they were like, cause I had like a discord server and all that stuff as well. And there's always people talking about games and conversing and asking questions about this and that. It's just, it's just awesome. And um, again, like this was nothing was like calculated at all. It was just like, I just want to do this right. and talk about video games and music. And that same concept applies to like the band now too, where it's like, we just want to do stuff to like meet people and talk to people who are into this same shit. Mm -hmm. So and um, this kind of became like a snowball effect and it's, it's just what it is now. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's a few things I want to break down there. The first being, you know, anyone that wants to do anything, like take their passion into something where they can, you know, go from full time to part time or quit their job entirely and they can do it full time needs to do the upfront work in the first few years in the evenings, like, you know, choosing not to watch Netflix to like work on the, thing from you know nine o'clock to midnight or one in the morning like i can't tell you how many times oh, yeah. where i've like you know i've done i've done this shit for many many years and i've like sacrificed a lot of leisure time to be able to do that and there's still there's still moments where i am in that place where i'm like okay one more episode of the office or whatever and then i'm like um struggling uh to get that podcast episode out or that playlist ready for, right. for the drop the next day so you it's get, a lot of self-discipline that you have to put on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like, I, it, it's a balancing act. Like, you do need to give yourself time to, like, you know, reset and, like, recharge, so to speak. Um, but, like... It took me a long time to learn that. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I think really a lot... If you're doing something you love, you get in this, like, um, head down, like like tunnel blind, vision blind type shit. tunnel vision like obsessive nature mm -hmm. like it becomes this thing where you know especially in the first few years of doing scoped it was like the only thing that i wanted to do i didn't want to like like even if you look at my my own personal creative stuff i was kind of doing them both in tandem i was like oh i want to like you know take my camera out and make a little you know video with my dog or or something like that but like that yeah. almost decreased so i could do scoped as like as full time as I can. And like, not even sure. stuff with my dog, but even stuff like, um, you know, cause I'm a huge believer in like supporting your local businesses. So I was doing, a, I, I started doing like a series just like, like, um, just in, in my, on my own YouTube channel, I was interviewing people that, you know, um, do ceramics or they draw or whatever. And I like, I had to hard stop that because I realized, you know, the stuff that I'm doing is scoped it's resonating with people and I like it way, way more. So I might as yeah. well just put all my eggs put, into that. Basket. Put your, exactly. And I mean, and it, it's growing and I feel like every time you post something, it, it kind of just keeps like climbing. So yeah, um, it's cool to see. I'm, I'm happy for you and everything you're doing, dude. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. But, but I do think like, you know, like I'm, I'm, 
I, I think with anything creative and you're trying to make that your, you know, nine to five, you, like I said before, you need to put in the, the hours in the evenings and on the weekends and all that. But at the same time, I mean, time, you have to like, you have to put your own life into it. Like, yes. like if, if you really want to see something like, like if you really believe in it and you want to see it flourish and blossom, like, like, like you have to put yourself into it, man. Like mm -hmm. spend the resources, the time and sacrifice, like, like, oh man, but like all my friends are doing this one thing right now. Uh, sometimes, and, and if they're your, you know, if they're your homies for real, like they they understand too. Mm. Um, and I still, you know, uh, still struggle with the. It's two in the morning, and I just want to get on Photoshop. Uh, but my girlfriend's like, you know, you need you 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 go so hard or work so much. Like, why don't you just take some time to chill? And I was like, you know, what? like she's right for sure. And and I think that'll always be like a an obstacle is to like like give yourself time to rest too, because that's just as important. Absolutely. If you want to put out the best thing, you need to also be properly rested to even be able to think of some of the ideas you can even do. So Absolutely. it's just a, it's a, it's a spider web of bullshit all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think the other thing that I, I wanted to quick, quickly hit on is I, I think, I think people our age or even people younger than us or even older get lost in the idea of like, what success is because a lot of people look at success as how much money that you're making at the end of the at the end of the day and yeah and even gets even like crazier with kids younger because they go on youtube and look at all these people that are just making youtube videos and making millions of dollars and they think that is the goal versus maybe being self-aware of like is espionage gonna be be making millions of dollars at some point like I don't know, but even if it yeah. was like making a hundred thousand dollars, that would still be a huge, huge win for you. Same thing yeah. with me. Like, you know, I feel like getting beverage sponsors, not in the sense that say when or new level or anyone else is giving us money. It's just like, you're giving me free products. Like that to me is like a step in the right direction. Yeah. And, and you get to talk about them because you already like them in the first place. So, right. so <laughs> It's just, it's just organic, dude. Like, like that's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's like, like no fake bullshit. Like, right. It's what you like. And if espionage like helps me, uh, keep creating and keep my head stimulated to like, keep making like, like art or whatever, like that's the real like payoff. Absolutely. More than yeah. anything else. Like the thing that allows you to keep doing the thing that makes you feel like yourself. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think like, um, yeah, over time, just building it. So it's like, hey, like if my nine to five was just doing this podcast, like that would be an absolute dream. But I've accepted early on that that is a multi-year, if not decade process. So I can- And if you want to do that, you know what it takes. It's not just like a, I don't know what's happening. We're just sitting, like I'm, nothing's come out. I was like, no, like you have to like chase it too. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um. So, so getting back to- uh, espionage. So we've talked a little bit about the, the different, you know, uh, the overall umbrella and the different funnels that you've done. Um, do you constantly have a little bit of a game of, I really wanted to do a design for this game, this series, this brand, this movie, but I don't know if people are actually gonna like, it's not as like mainstream, so to speak. Uh, right. or, um... or are there other ones where you're like, I could do this, but it like everyone in that space has already done it. And it's almost kind of beating a dead horse to a degree. Um, and how the rule of espionage goes is if, if I like it, that's all that matters. Sure. Um, there's no, if it looks, if it's cool, like everything, I will never do something I didn't vibe with either growing up or care about now. Um, I like, I, I get questions all the time. Oh, can you do so and so or uh, or whatever? Uh, I, I forgot what someone. Uh, one of the more recent ones that someone asked me, they were like, "Can you do?" I, I guess one someone asked me was like, "Can you do like a Modern Warfare two or whatever?" And I was like, "I I don't not like that game. I just don't care. Like it's not my thing. I mm. I, I can't." And people are like, "You make so much money or whatever," and I'm like, "It's just I wouldn't feel right doing that." Yeah. And I also don't want to do it i don't care about that game like that um 
and no disrespect to the game. The game is obviously what it is, but like it, it's not, it's not what it is. Like, it's yeah. not for me. Um, like I remember, you know, I was like, I want to do like, I guess the, one of the more recent ones that uh, I put out was the uh, condemn shirt. Yeah. And a lot of people, the people were like, Oh, like I never played this game or this game. I didn't like this game or whatever. I was like, but I wanted to do a shirt of it because I love this game playing it like a few years ago. It was like, a, I was like, damn, this shit like really hit me. And I was like, I, I don't care if one person buys it. Like I have to do it. Mm -hmm. I have to make it. And and that's what it is at the end of the day. I would never do something that I would like, they're like, dude, but you'd make, it would be this big, big ordeal. I'm like, okay, well then you do it. Like I I don't want to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, it's, 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 there's no, and I don't know if you've maybe gotten this vibe, this whole podcast, but there's just no rule, uh, as long as it's just what I like or what we like. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's, I, that's it. There, there's no, there's no like, there's no like a uh, screening or process behind anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, I love that point of like, if you're, you're seeing, if you're seeing a gap, you, you do it. Like you learn Photoshop, you learn yeah. how to do all that, that aspects. Cause that's really, I, I think a lot of creative individuals can attest, like that's how they started doing their thing. Like for me, no one was filming bands the way that I wanted to see bands filmed at the shows that I was going to. So I started doing that and look at where we are now. And it's, yeah, it's a of, product of exact. It's a product of like what you are slash what you want to see. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And that and that's, that, that's what it is at the end of the day. Like when I started espionage, I was like, I'm only doing stuff that I care about. And it speaks to so many people and it resonated with so many people. I would never change it because of, like why like it just uh i've connected with like so many people because this is just uh like oh i found people who also grew up playing metal gear splinter cell hitman and like that's the people i care like i want to talk to you know i i don't necessarily i don't i don't care to do something that's not like a part of like my whole thing you know right yeah yeah I, i think i think with a lot of things you can kind of easily tell who is doing it genuinely versus who's doing it to hit the numbers that they want to see. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and at the end of the day, that's that if people get happiness from straight monetary means only, and that's their like path with it, then that's cool. But like, I think I'd rather do the thing that uh, can, is more putting myself into it, whether it makes a dollar or more, you know? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Cause like, even on this podcast, like obviously, um, you know, since season two started, like, um, the, the top episode that I've put out, uh, has been Brian of knock looses. And at that point I was like very intentional about showcasing. I'm not only going after the Brian of knock looses of the world. Like I'm going after yeah. these other people that I genuinely am interested about, whether it's their band, the stuff that they're doing outside of that. Um, so I think it's, it's a, it's a game of, you know, obviously you're trying to build something. So you don't want to just like, Oh, I'm only going to talk to the people in my inner circle. Cause you're trying to grow, but you know, and I've said this before you doing a one for them and one for yourself is kind of how I try to do it like doing something that's for, you know, if people want to see it, um, but also kind of making sure that you, you check your own boxes as well. That's it. That's, that's cool. And that's important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And chances are like, like you, especially with what you do, you're, you're talking to people that maybe you don't even know at all. Right. Like every now and then, like, yeah. And I think that's really cool because it kind of like, takes you out of your comfort zone not like it's anything like not like it's a bad thing to do but it it makes you feel like okay like how could this go or um and by the end of it you'll you'll learn so much uh and kind of like learning about what other people like and then you might find that common ground it's like oh cool so it's it's really cool that you do that because that to me that's the scary thing (laughs) i'm gonna talk to god like this guy uh that i've never talked to before like like and then we're gonna be face to face on the webcam like how is that going to go? Right. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times like I have talked with someone and I like, I might know their demo that they put up, but I know nothing about who they are. And like, you know, people in hardcore are either like really on social media or really aren't on social media. So I, sometimes Definitely. I don't have that reference point half the time, but I can confidently say like, you know, I, I think 
we've done 121 episodes and each episode for me, I've been able to take like some nugget of information, inspiration. Like I've enjoyed every single one. None of them have been like, well, that one sucked. And then I move on to the next thing. I, I genuinely, I, I mean, yeah. I genuinely, the way you are, it, it sounds like a, it, it to me how talking to you sounds like you've been doing this like forever now. Right. Yeah. I'm, you know, it, it's funny because when we started, um, sorry, I'm just like plugging my shit. We're going to get back to your, no, dude, it's cool. But, um, you know, when I wanted to have like a new intro for season two, you know, the, the episode, you know, for the, for the audio listeners, you won't see this, but the visuals, it's like, it says it kind of flashes in the, the episode number and now we're in the three digit mark. So now it's like, Oh, we're oh, literally shit. going from 100 to 999 eventually. And then I'll have to, <laughs> you know, do the, uh, an updated uh, version a plus, of that. Uh, a plus. Uh, yeah, new, game, new game plus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A bonus episode. Um, well, I, I wanted to talk because in addition to all like the shirts and little um, things like that they are doing, you, you also do like the podcast uh, as well. Um and and that was really cool. Like I really like how you guys can 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 go from games all the way into like re, like get very real and talk about some real life shit. Um, is is all the members that do that show all members of Vatican or is there one that I me and Tom me and Tom and then our friend Bert who I was just telling you about who uh, gotcha. kind of guided me through the Halo series. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it's us three, and he's you know he's into music stuff and like he's like hardcore you know listener as well so um yeah no it, he's not in the band but he's basically like kind of in the band for a lot of <laughs> like, like we're together all the fucking time so. yeah um yeah no he so it's just us three uh and the whole like getting real deep talking shit like that was it was just kind of like an accidental thing as well it was like we didn't know like and a lot of people hit us up about that and talking like oh i like how you could talk about like mario and then go into like you know being depressed <laughs> um this but is like the mario it, and mental health segment of the, of the podcast, yeah right? it, it, a lot of people uh, have reached out to us and told us like how much it means to them that like there was a place for them to listen to people talk about some of the same things as as uh as what they're going through or have been through and um it always circles back to like connecting with people and that's absolutely the most important thing about any facet of what the vr umbrella does either the via espionage or the the stores that tom and nolan do or the band or the podcast so mm. like that's all that really matters you know yeah like to to do some really cheesy wordplay like connecting with people either on an emotional level or like literally our our uh, networks are connecting and we're playing this game together. Um, exactly. I, but I honestly, I do think that m great podcasts don't set up barriers. Like we're not going to talk about these things and you just let the conversation roll. Cause that's literally happened on, on this episode that we're recording literally right now. And, pl and, and plenty of other ones where, you know, like, I got all these questions about breakdowns, but we're talking about like this serious mental health, like thing that you overcame, like, like it would feel weird to like hard transition to try and get back on script, you know? <laughs> right. Right. No, I, and I like, I love that. And we talked about this earlier in the episode where like, you know, you kind of fall into something on accident. Like when I was learned that like the drummer of the police did the spiral, uh, uh, you know, he did all the music for spiral. I, I was like, Oh shit. Like I kind of want to like go in that direction now. And mm -hmm. you know, you kind of just, there's no, you know, boundaries with stuff. Yeah, um, it's it's been a while since you guys have put out a, a new episode. Um, but tell me what goes into like, you know, talking about themes uh, or like different series or like, hey, let's talk about this very timely news with like maybe Cyberpunk being released for for example. Right. What goes into that? There, um, really, I think you know we kind of talk about like what's like a rough topic that we can like start with and then eventually bounce off of mm -hmm. and that's basically how it goes like we can be like um there was an episode that didn't come out um because it got fucked up and lost it was an episode where we talked about like a bunch of military shooters that we grew up playing like back in the day like sure conflict desert storm and like brothers in arms like that type that world of uh, military games um i think the computer tom was using at the time uh 
fucked up and the audio didn't come through. I don't remember what it was, but like that's an episode we did. It's like two hours or something, and it was just like, where did it all go? It's just gone. No. <laughs> but like we were like, the idea was like, you know, let's just talk about the old military shooters that we grew up with, and then we'll kind of bounce off of that. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty. I don't know how like you structured like how you want to do your episodes, but uh, for us, it was just you know one thing and then bounce off. And there's a couple things we'll always kind of hit like what we've been up to before we're getting into the meat of the topic and then right. ending things by like talking about like things we recommend. There's like, there's like little beats here and there, but uh, yeah. it's pretty loose though. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and that's probably why they are like three hours long is because there is no, <laughs> it's just loose. Yeah. But I, but again, like not setting up boundaries and, and making it just um like someone is in the room uh, is, is the, is the the right goal i think with with doing a podcast like i want yeah. i want people to feel like they're a part of this conversation even though most of the time they would just be yelling at the at the at the computer or yelling in their car like spencer how do you not remember this album that you're talking you're trying to remember right. whatever it is have, have you ever thought of doing like a live kind of thing or have you done that before uh yeah, so that's interesting that you bring that up because I'm I'm having a meeting with uh, the rest of the scope team uh, later today. But um, I I have thought about doing a live for potentially like um, like a charity event, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. So th that's been something that I've been brewing. It's not something official, but I thought it would be cool to you know have some kind of you know stuff that's on deck. So it's like if we hit certain milestones in raising enough money for something then it's like okay cue this unreleased live set of this band or you know cue like uh, like straight up i thought about reaching out to you guys about you know because that would be the goal to like let's raise enough money to unlock this you know exclusive piece of content so right uh, right you know it's funny that you bring it up because i thought well what if i asked the vatican guys if we you know if we did some kind of um live or pre-recorded like smash tournament that like once we raise two thousand dollars we'll show that to the rest of the people um oh yeah dude if, if, if any ideas you have shoot them my way man like yeah. it's like i would love to help with that yeah you know like so yeah i have thought about that um you know like also kind of like you know like i've talked about this before but like kind of transitioning where you know this show doesn't necessarily need to only be one-on-one -on -one interviews so eventually I want to do, and, and this will help when, you know, getting into a, a space with people safely, um, is a little bit more normal, but doing more team podcasts, doing more listening parties, and just again, like growing that scoped exposure podcast umbrella and having the different things that, that people can tune into, you know, depending on what flavor it. that they want. Um, exactly. That's, it's fun, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, on, on the, on the live you know, discussion and, you know, talking about games and whatnot. Um, if, you know, if, you know, you woke up a little genie bottle by your night, night, nightstand, you rub it, genie pops out and says, Hosian, new Vatican sounds really sick. Um, what are three game things that you would love to see Vatican material in? Like, you know, there's no emails that need to be sent out. Like you wish it, it's in there. Um, what are ones that come to mind like we play it like we make a thing for this game is basically yeah it would either be like okay like we're making this single for this movie game series um, okay yeah i i feel well, like that's, that's tough. i feel like that would be probably better versus like just picking uh, a demo and then applying that to whatever right like right you can um, add some context to it i would absolutely love to make music or do something musically for one of the Yakuza games mm -hmm. because it, um, those games have great music, amazing music. Um, it would either, it would be that doing something for Tekken and, uh, Metal Gear is kind of not a thing anymore at the time, but if, if it, if it still was that, but, uh, probably like, I don't know, Devil May Cry, another game with like really cool music. Yeah. Um, I would die if that was op opportunities <laughs> given to us. Absolutely. Yeah. You you don't see that as much because, you know, like, and I think Tom and John and I talked about that on their podcast, just like how discovering heavy music came through a lot of different games and whatnot. 
Um, but I, I don't know, you know, I'm not playing every new Call of Duty release, so I don't know if they're putting, you know, heavier bands like, you know, whoever on those, or if it's just like, what's the most, you know, who's going to pay us the most money to be in the, I, I don't know how any of those things work. Really, I know like with like Tony Hawk and stuff like that, like they have like actual games, uh, like uh, soundtracks with like bands and stuff like right. that. And I think Cyberpunk had real bands be like make them up make them fake bands in the game to make like in-game music it was like Converge did a song but they weren't called Converge. they were like oh. a made up a made up name for like the universe of cyberpunk mm. but then they wrote a song for the game i see. a couple other bands uh, cool. what's a uh, tomb mold um they also did a song for cyberpunk mm. and they weren't tomb mold though they were another band but they sounded like tomb mold because it was a death metal song I see. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess- that's another. That's that's a way to sneak it in and like a. Oh, it's part of like the universe. I guess like right. It's not converged, but it's. It's. Right. Know. Yeah. It's one of those. I think it's one of. The, I don't know. I don't know if there's an actual term for this, but it's one of those things where you're watching pop culture like shows and they'll reference something else, and then it's like, oh, okay, so like Superman exists in this reality. Or friends right. exists in the Superman universe, or or you know, vice versa, or whatever. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I do like that where it's like anyone that listens might recognize a vocalist's voice or a style of music, but you know, it's like the uh, converged version in the cyberpunk universe. Yeah, and That's it's a band that only exists in cyberpunk, but it was the members of Converge making a song for it. Yeah. 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 That's very cool. I think if which is cool. Yeah, I think if I had to pick one, if you know. I know there's like the Tony Hawk one and two like remastered games. If they did a Tony yeah. Hawk three remastered, I would love if my band could be on that. I feel like we would fit that vibe really well. And that's, that's my personal favorite um, Tony Hawk game. So that would, just, yeah. that would be a dream come true for sure. And being in like any game, basically at this point, they were like, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, dude, let's, right. let's, That'd be awesome. Yeah, I I would love to see that. Even if it was something of just like um like an indie game, um like anything to be like we our music is in a video game. Like that would be badass. And or like Death Stranding, another one where like bigger artists made games specific, uh, made music or made songs specifically for the game. Um, that's a, that I would, like I said, I would definitely die if that if if Kojima was like. Put Vatican on this game. Right. I'd be like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, Jose, and a couple more questions before we start to wrap up. Um, anyone that knows you knows that you are a diehard Hitman fan. Yeah. So <laughs> I love Hitman. So tell me about the first time that you played Hitman and why, I guess, you wanted to uh, wave that flag so proudly uh, with some of the... Because honestly, like, I think the one of the first times that I had seen you outside of just like the vatican music was when you were doing like a giveaway like you like did you buy games and you were just giving them away to your friends just so more people can play oh yeah uh when i did the hitman thing also not to be repetitive here but a last minute plus (laughs) like five second before it happened idea i think i got back from practicing with tom and i was like dude i gotta make a shirt really fast like to kind of like spread like more awareness for people playing hitman or something sure. like that uh and and basically like if you bought a shirt uh you were automatically entered to a raffle where you oh, uh, right. would win a co- you'd win a copy of hitman but i also uh made it to where it was two copies so you'd win but then you're you can also give one to your a friend or whoever mm-hmm. um in any platform pc ps uh, whatever um, just because I was like, it's like, oh man, it, that costs a lot of money to buy six copies of Hitman because it was a uh, three winners, so right. six games. I was like, who gives a shit though? I, I love Hitman and I want people to play Hitman because it's it's like the only it's like the last like of the two uh, thousands like stealth game icons. Mm-hmm. Um, you had uh, Sam Fisher and Snake and and Agent Forty Seven, right? Uh, and and you know. No disrespect to Agent Forty Seven, but no one would think that he would be the last one left. Oh, like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, like so it, to me, 
that says a lot. It's a huge deal that like he's still kicking and doing awesome games. And it's, uh, and I was like, I want more people to play this because like, he's like the last flag holder. And then there's more games around that umbrella. Mm. But like, we're talking like, for me, like the three like gods of stealth, it was Splinter Cell, Metal Gear and, and Hitman. Mm. Uh, and, and to me, the smaller one is still there, you know, like, and climbing up still like three games uh, in this like generation that are uh, phenomenal and like near perfect in my, in my opinion. Uh, mm. But I just wanted more people to, to play them. And, uh, and a lot of them did. And they're like, man, like, I'm glad uh, you talked about this game. I'm glad that you were annoying as shit on the internet about it because I played it and picked it up and, and I love it. So right. I, I, I've been playing Hitman since I was in, I think since I was 15, I played the first one uh, I played was blood money. Mm. Um, and uh, ever since then I was like, man, this is, this game is so like freedom based. Like you can do whatever you want. If you wanted to be that guy shooting up the whole place, looking for your targets, you could, but you'd probably die pretty easily. Sure. And, and, and it's a, uh, or you could like disguise yourself and kind of like sneak around and figure out the map and, and do that. That freedom was there. And I like it because it's, it's not a fast paced game. It's very patient based and mm-hmm. very methodical. And I always appreciate things like that because it, it helps, it gets you more immersed, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, you know, this is a totally different game jump or style of game jump, but it was always like Halo was this perfect shooter for me growing up. Cause it was like there it's faster pace, but it, you can't just boom, you kill someone in one shot. So when I was like starting to play call of duty, I really didn't like the, the, that aspect where it was like so fast. Um, yeah. I, but I loved games growing up where I would play, uh, Splinter Cell, Assassin's Creed, where it's like I really had to like assess the situation and think of my way of doing it when there's probably, you know, 10 to 20 different ways to approach. Um, and it's so satisfying too because you're like, mm-hmm. it's like, it's like, oh man, like all these little like A, B, C, D, like all these little things that I made them happen and look around and like I just like cleared this level because you thought of that way you know Mm -hmm. yeah i like that shit a lot dude yeah and and like halo kind of felt the same way where it's like yes like the goal is to go from this point in the map all the way through but you know the the guns that you choose to get you through that are are totally up to you like what's the smartest way to handle this situation Mm -hmm. um i think i got really halo like i said really clicked with me super easily because it was like i'm not a big shooter uh gamer or anything but like when i played halo i was like this is literally the most perfect untouchable version of what a shooter is to me Mm -hmm. absolutely i was like damn i was like i can't i was telling burr i was like i can't believe that i it's been it's it's taken up this long for me to finally dive into the series Mm -hmm. but i'm glad and thankful that it was because i got to play with him but um man it was yeah, I started playing the Master Chief Collection and playing online and stuff. And I was like, this is like the god of first person shooters. Yeah. And will always be to me. Yeah. Like, you know, just on the time of recording this, I think it was just yesterday that it's like Halo's 20th birthday. And I'm like, I'm 28 now. And so like eight year old me or like nine, 10, whatever year uh, age it was where I was playing that first game and just being blown away um you know ha- had a huge impact on me and i know clearly affected and it's cool to see like a lot of people like yourself that are getting put onto that game through things like the master chief collection or through those things because honestly as like a diehard halo fan after five i was like i don't know about this shit anymore like i'll that's still, the one i haven't played yet yeah like don't don't have high expectations because like <laughs> it like again like this is going to be a little bit more nerdier halo talk but like you can you can clearly see where like bungie who was like that was their baby and then after reach handing that off to 343 it was like one of those things where like things were getting a little lost in the sauce so my my hope never get lost in the sauce never get lost in the sauce (laughs) so my hope is when the this newest game comes out because there are certain series where it's like 
okay, this game comes out. I don't have this console. I need to be like buy the machine to play this game essentially. Um, right. So when that game comes out, I hope that they really, it like things have been delayed and I don't know what your opinion is on games being delayed, but like, to me, it's like, I would much rather that versus they ship a game that's broken or unfinished. Oh, I'm, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. Like I think, I think, you know, cyberpunk was, uh, the, one of the biggest and most recent examples of that, where it's like, okay, there's so much hype into this game and you know, so many things are not working. <laughs> it was it was a game that probably should have been delayed multiple years not pushed back like a like a season <laughs> right well like even um you know uh i know battlefront uh the second one it was like terrible at launch and i remember that because i was playing this i was like i can't even get into a lobby uh master chief collection was kind of had a little bit of a sloppy start at the beginning too but that's what i heard yeah but like battlefront specifically like is almost like has this huge fan base that like still plays that game, but it took like a year or a year and a half to actually like get the servers right, get like all these different things set up. And that's a classic EA bullshit. They'll put out a game and then they'll be like, we'll just fix it as it's, uh, as it's out. So we're making right. money. Right. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have those microtransactions going. We'll still, uh, it'll be fine. But um, yeah, you could buy, you could buy that costume. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I do, I do think, um, what were we talking about? We're talking about games being delayed and, uh, yeah, I think, where did we jump off there? (laughs) I think I was talking about Hitman and then it it went off. Oh, right. Yeah. No, well, we were talking about Halo, but I do think like, I, I think it's cool. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm, you know, retracing my steps i think it's cool that uh halo has all these different generations of different players but at the same token like hitman having these people who are like diehard since day one and now like you know potentially yourself to to kind of make some new hitman fans if there's if there's anything that vatican should be sponsored by it should be like some gaming store like gamestop or whatever just giving you guys (laughs) games to play (laughs) to talk on your podcast um i remember Tommy Earl uh, Jenkins, he's a voice actor for Die Hardman on Death Stranding. Um, he uh, he followed me, and we started talking, and eventually kind of had like a you know fun online friendship or whatever. Mm. Um, he would like had retweeted like Vatican stuff before um, because like I guess he saw that like there was like a Death Stranding clip in ex nihilo video yeah and um and he's i guess because i talked about it enough he knew that i was in the band or whatever and i remember uh asking him i was like hey man can i like use a picture of you pointing this way to like put the vatican album like where your finger's at and he was like yeah great that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah like that's cool i like things like that are fun mm. What what's yeah, like and like when somebody sees that yeah, I was I was gonna ask what is like is there someone in like the gaming world that like like either you could like present the Vatican music to or just like even if it was like having them as like a like a, a hero guest on um on the Espionage podcast like who 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 would be like the biggest fish that that you would want to catch? Um, most definitely. David Hayter, who plays the voice of a snake, uh, definitely Metal Gear Solid. Um, that's awesome. He's a yeah. That's like my ultimate like voice acting god, like guy. Where I'm like, you're the best of all time. Um, yeah, him, him for sure. Mm-hmm. And also Tommy for uh, Die Hardman, just because he's been so cool and friendly and everything. I'm like, I would love to pick his brain about uh, about like process of like acting voice acting but also having to do it in like mocap and uh, i'm that whole world seems so convoluted and complex to me yeah like having to be a good voice actor and then all of a sudden you're asked to like physically act as well like uh, like you spent so many years being a voice actor mm. uh now they want you to like perform and also act at the same time wearing all this crazy shit yeah yeah like it, it's definitely been crazy to see the evolution of that um I, I, I don't know why I just thought of this, but like if there's some Vatican music video or experience that has mocap 
and all you guys can be decked out in the suits like oh my gosh man that should yeah, absolutely I, happen I, I would love to do that once i have like a trillion dollars to make it happen <laughs> unified like let can you go have these with the band like let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah dude that would be so awesome yeah 100 dude <laughs> no that that is super sick i think if if i was having anyone like i don't know why like obviously i'm a big like halo fan so i'm thinking about like having like marty o'donnell to like talk about how he like made all the music and essentially like music's I, crazy good yeah like like him working with bands like breaking benjamin or hoobastank to like you know add more or even just like being in the studio with steve Vai. um i think i've talked about this before but like he did the, that uh he did a uh, reach or 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 odst right he steve did Vai? everything from one to reach so i think that involves odst that involves three two um, gotcha but not four um but like like if if there's any greatest uh nerd videos of all time for me it's the studio video where they're recording the the intro for halo 2 and steve Vai has his like whammy guitar and him just like freestyling like the <laughs> and like the dive bomb like oh my gosh like that is still like yeah you see people in the background just like their jaws are on the floor just like so just insanely blown away by that that's epic yeah no i'll, I'll send it to you if you haven't seen that before um, yeah yeah do it, it gives man. me chills um so uh hosey and this has been an absolute blast uh i love all the stuff you're doing Dang, obviously with the band stuff but also with espionage and and hope you guys keep that going um appreciate it dude likewise to you as well man. absolutely um the last little question is a favorite mosh moment that you would like to share on the podcast so it doesn't necessarily need to be like this happened to me i did this uh this happened at a vatican show whatever's the very first thing off the top of your head uh yeah the so um i don't know if i don't remember if tom or mackie mentioned this uh before but uh there was a show we played in florida we were on tour with that band blood bather right uh and i remember we were there's a video of us playing on stage and then shout out to kyler um who's the vocalist of that band he <laughs> he did a he was moshing and then he did like a spin kick and I'll have to find this video because it actually, I think it like got, it it like went brief, like a little viral thing on Twitter or whatever, okay. but uh, he like spin kicked this guy in the, in the face and the guy fell back and then he like got up again. And then again, I don't even know if it was planned because it looked so like seamless. He did a spin kick again to the same guy and knocked him out for real this time <laughs> in like a big mosh. Oh he was like kicking. And I was like, oh man, the guy just got like, like double KO'd. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that is probably my favorite that I've seen that I can think of like off the dome. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful and just perfectly. It, it was, I don't know if it was on purpose, but it felt so natural and seeing that video. I've seen that video so many times because of how clean it all was. Right. Uh, fast forward, fast forward, like, half a year and then kyler the guy who did that he's marching to us now at this is hardcore and then he gets knocked out <laughs> and he, he had he had to get dragged oh, out of the venue because he was knocked unconscious Friend. so uh well yeah it, it all came back for him yeah yeah it all it all comes back around everyone's you know get given some spin kicks but at the same time you should get some spin kicks at the same time exactly dude <laughs> um well dude yeah, this has been a blast. Uh, anything that you want to plug? Sorry for the doggo barking in oh, that's okay. the background. Um, All good. Anything you want to plug, send the people off with. Uh, the floor is yours forever for whatever you want to end on. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, like playing Vatican, and uh, you can check out our new songs uh, for our two-song EP, Become a New God, um, Fractured God music video uh, on YouTube, and... Um, if you want to check us out, vaticanvr.com, that's the website, uh, and just kind of see what you know what we're doing now. So that's that's all I care about. Yeah, yeah. No, I I shout out to all the gamers. Rise up, yeah. Rep your shit, and uh, thanks for coming on the podcast again, man. 
and play Hitman, dude. Yeah. <laughs>